We're all familiar with that sudden buzzing of a controller when the action heats up. But have we ever wondered what that's called? Welcome to the world of haptic technology. Games can mean a whole lot to us. They reach us emotionally and engage us with complex plots, exciting action, or just mindless fun. Feeling engaged in the action is getting more and more immersive as technology advances, giving our favorite tech the ability to make sure we truly feel the experience. A shake of a controller, a buzz, the tension of the triggers. This may seem a fairly common feature. We may barely even register it anymore. It's all par for the course. But it had to start from somewhere. When did our machines start to touch us back? So, a quick catch-up for anyone unfamiliar with the term haptic tech. Haptic technology is the term used to describe machinery or tech that interacts with the user via touch-based sensations. Reactions and communications from machines usually break down into a few categories normally. Vibration, force feedback, air vortex rings, and ultrasound. Early forms of this were used in aircraft to warn of dangerous conditions. The resistance sometimes used on the controls was implemented in excavators and heavy machinery. It was also tested in regards to neuroplasticity and medical treatments. So, how did this end up in games? The first game noted to include this feature was the arcade cabinet racer known as Motocross. Released by Sega in 1976, the motorbike handles on the cabinet vibrated during an in-game vehicle collision. From there, the sky was the limit. Other companies took notice and other racing games eventually implemented similar features and expanded into other sensor reactions, including force feedback. The pinball machine Earthshaker also adopted some of these features. The rumble motor would announce the beginning of the bonus round along with the voice line, Earthshaker. These early examples showed how much these sensory additions could immerse or involve the player in the game experience, cementing its role in future consoles and gaming hardware. After taking the arcade by storm, Haptic technology eventually made its way to home consoles and hardware. They started as additions that could be attached to the original controllers in order to add the vibration effects, commonly referred to as rumble packs. The N64 unveiled its rumble pack in 1997, soon followed by the Sidewinder Force Feedback Pro by Microsoft and the DualShock by Sony. The Sega Dreamcast had two options by 1999, both with the Sega Jump Pack and the Performance Tremor Pack. One oddity in the 90s was the Interactor Vest created by Aura Systems. This force feedback device was created to allow the wearer to feel the impact of a punch or kick in the game through the vibrations. This wasn't the last of the gamer vests an immersive reality, though the trend would die down for about a decade with few changes or notable additions. 2007 had a resurgence with the Forceware Vest, later called the 3RD Space Vest, released by TN Games. The big change with this hardware was the direction abilities. Action that was not within the player's view would be taken into account. Blows or attacks from behind would be felt, reminding the player to watch their backs. This vest worked with over 50 titles, many being the ever-popular first-person shooter format. 2010 brought us another work, being the Tactile Gamer Vest. Not just kicks and punches anymore, this hardware boasted the ability to simulate gunshots, slashing wounds, and blow-flow sensations. Body blows, environmental impacts, and temperature features were also developed allowing even deeper immersion still. This may seem a bit overkill for the standard gaming experience, but the extreme measures of this vest are incredibly useful for military training practices, replicating an environment rather than just an image and a buzz. A far cry from a shaking handlebar, the lengths we've gone to for immersion are incredible, and the story doesn't stop there. One of the biggest buzzworthy, pun intended, news points of recent memory would certainly be the PS5. The haptic tech involved in the controller is one of the most basted features. But aside from the rumble or shake, what does this one do differently? The DualSense controller on the PS5 includes a new shape and houses voice coil actuators instead of the previous motors or weights. These feedback devices use the same tech as speakers do to create the vibrations. This upgrade makes the vibrations more precise, stopping and starting with a moment's notice. But the features on this controller move further than the standard rumble. Trigger haptics are included to further the experience. Previous spring-based systems in triggers created some tension, but it was uniform all around. Now, each trigger can feel unique. A pistol against something deadlier like a grenade launcher. More than just firearms, think of the pedal of a car, the resistance of a paved road against grass or mud. It's something we don't think about actively most of the time, but it's still part of the overall human experience. An article by Wired notes that bowstring tension could be experienced through the new trigger features. Compared to the easy toss of a bowling ball on the old Wii Sports unit, these measures make the situation all the more real. 
Controllers can only do so much in terms of full immersion. This is where VR steps in to take the lead. Nothing says immersion like virtual reality and interacting with three-dimensional space. There are no outside distractions or discarded soda cans to pull you out of it. And though there is much less sitting and relaxing, you can't say it's not incredibly surreal. Now, we've covered vibrations and tension triggers, but beyond that lies an even larger realm of possibility. Some companies have done away with the controller altogether. How is this possible? Well, in a couple of ways. To feel these sensations without an object in hand, something else has to provide the environmental reactions. One method which has been worked on by a few companies, including Microsoft, is with air vortex rings. Jets of air emitted via speakers that did not lose their shape or precision like a normal burst of air would, allowing for interaction without any controllers needed. This is meant to allow users to interact with the tech at a distance. Even more precise than the air vortex, ultrasound waves are also a new tool in the world of haptic tech. Companies like Ultraleap have created speakers that can be arranged to create a form of interactive space, tracking hand motion and creating different sensations midair. No controller necessary. And while we aren't in the space age yet, there's a world of possibility yet to come. Maybe holding something in your hand isn't your speed, but you already strapped on the headset, so what are a few more wearables? Today's industry has you covered. Those gaming vests have only gotten more advanced with time, using more and more different forms of vibrations to mimic an environmental reality. For more than just video games, these vests can be compatible with movies as well. Some are marketed towards DJs and performers to provide more immersion into their music. Haptic tech shoes are even coming onto market, intending to give the feel of moving in a VR space even more. Ladders in VR can already be dizzying. Now you may even be able to feel the bars as you climb. Haptic isn't just reserved for the video game industry. In terms of entertainment, movies have been using their 4D format in recent years. Movement of seat and puffs of air in order to create a sensation that matches the screen in front, with the addition of a fairly cushy chair, of course. This feature is a draw to the bigger theaters, as a home movie experience is incredibly common, with platforms like Netflix and Disney Plus giving us endless content with additional new releases. These tactile experiences in the theater are giving them the edge over the living room couch. The times are still a-changing, though, as the multi-level experience is finding its way into our homes. The smart houses of today with systems like Google Home can react to many things around us without the press of a button. Additional speakers and rigs are getting more and more compact. With the already digital houses, the control panel is already present. With adjustments to external devices reacting to the film, not far-fetched at all. With haptic feedback and temperature controls, the power is in our hands. The atmosphere tech is there, ready to step from our movies into our games and VR worlds. Entertainment aside, the tactile abilities of haptic tech have been introduced in many different technologies for a more interactive or precise experience. Medical tech used by both doctors and patients are being improved with haptic technology. Surgery simulation can be done to a higher degree of realism, giving an overall improved education. Simulations for astronauts and pilots are also enhanced thoroughly, as the physical sensations of the changing altitudes and gravity is something that should be prepared for. Now, it can be simulated. Drivers can be notified of possible dangers through a vibration in the seat or feel the touchscreen respond with a buzz without drawing their attention off the road. Haptic tech is more than just for gaming, but it certainly is fun. The future is truly now. And while this is amazing, I'm still waiting on the mechs. Jokes aside, I'm not joking where are my mechs. The future of gaming and interactive technology is bright, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Let us know if there's anything we missed or any other gaming histories you want us to dig into. See you next time.